Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Friday, February 9th, and today is day 126 since October 7th. Um, in the last 24 hours or so, there has been unprecedented news coming from the Biden administration. Three significant things have happened. Um, one, we know that Secretary Blinken has just finished his fifth trip uh, to the Middle East since October 7th. And um, since his return and since uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's rejection of the most recent proposal for a temporary ceasefire in exchange for hostages, you know, Hamas had a counterproposal, Netanyahu rejected it, and he really rejected it in the face of the United States and in the face of Secretary Blinken. And so in light of that, um, and uh, Netanyahu and Blinken had just met, um, and Netanyahu rejected the um, counterproposal by Hamas. And then Netanyahu said that Israel is committed to the complete eradication of Hamas. Um, and not only that, um, the war would continue to go on. You know, this was very much in the face of the United States efforts behind the continued um, uh, efforts to, for the release of the hostages and end to the war. And so three significant things have happened in the last, I'd say, 24 to 48 hours. One, President Biden said that Israel's military conduct in Gaza has been over the top. This is his sharpest public rebuke since um, the conflict began. These comments were the strongest to date from President Biden. He's been reluctant to criticize Israel. There's been rising pressure from the Democratic Party um, as the number of casualties specifically in Gaza has increased. Um, President Biden said he also hopes for current negotiations around the release of hostages in exchange for long-term pauses in hostilities that they could lay the groundwork, you know, for changes in the type of war um, in the course of the war. According to the Washington Post, um, he said, I'm pushing very hard now to deal with this hostage ceasefire. He said, I've been working tirelessly. He said, um, because I think if we can get a delay, an initial delay, it'll provide kind of the circumstances by which, you know, that that could then be extended so that the prospect of this fighting can bring changes, something like that. Biden um, has been resistant to speak in detail about the suffering in Gaza, but he has um, spoken in the most visceral terms yet about the desperation in the Gaza enclave. So... Um, President Biden also said, he said, I've been pushing really hard on the humanitarian assistance issue. A lot of innocent people are starving. A lot of innocent people are in trouble. They're dying and it's got to stop. So this is a huge deal. And I hope the Lord willing a shift in the Biden administration's perspective towards the war. You know, he talked about innocent people suffering in Gaza. We've never heard kind of this idea or this language or this rhetoric. So that's number one. Number two, Biden on Thursday, yesterday, said um, that he was issuing a national security memorandum that calls for the State Department to receive written assurances from countries receiving U.S. weapons so that they abide by existing U.S. standards. Those include abiding by international law so that recipients of U.S. weapons will facilitate and not arbitrarily deny, restrict, or otherwise impede the transport of U.S. humanitarian assistance. Now, of course, they say this isn't specifically about Israel, but the timing of it comes after Biden got pressure from the Democrats and after the U.S. was kind of embarrassed after, you know, Blinken does this big trip to the Middle East. He's embarrassed. I mean, how could you not be? Like, it was completely an unsuccessful trip. Um, and so this national security memorandum comes in response to mounting criticism from the Democrats over Israel's military campaign and whether or not it's adhering to international law, despite receiving U.S. weapons and billions of dollars of aid. Now, it's important to note, not only is Israel being accused in the International Court of Justice of the potential of committing genocide, the United States is culpable as well, and so is the U.S. Congress. There was that court case, I think it was the Center for Constitutional Rights in California, that accused Biden of potentially being complicit in genocide. My understanding is that court case, um, uh, it was not found that he was complicit. I think that's my understanding. I've not read the details of that, but I think that that is what happened. But 
the U.S. could be because the U.S. is, of course, you know, weaponizing um, Israel. The third big thing on Thursday, White House spokesman John Kirby said that an Israeli operation in Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza, under the current circumstances would be a disaster um, and that the U.S. would not support it. So this is significant. In addition, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, discussed with the Israeli Defense Minister Gallant um, yesterday post-war plans, increasing humanitarian aid and stabilizing the West Bank. And Austin reiterated the need to protect civilians in Gaza. The U.S. saying that they don't support Israel's campaign into Rafah is a huge deal. So that's a really big deal. So in terms of how close is Israel to defeating Hamas, is Netanyahu close to his goal of eradicating the group? Senior U.S. military intel officers told members of Congress in private conversations that only a third of Hamas fighters have been killed in Gaza, according to the New York Times. Uh, The officers also reported that while Israel has degraded military capabilities of Hamas, it is not close to eliminating it. Um, According to Haaretz, just today, Prime Minister Netanyahu ordered Israeli's defense establishment to present plans to evacuate civilians from Gaza that are in Rafah. There's one million Palestinians right now in Rafah in the south of the Strip because it's impossible to achieve the goal of war and to eliminate Hamas while leaving four Hamas battalions in Rafah. Um, And so thus, civilians have to be evacuated. And the big question is, to where? You know, the majority of Gaza has been destroyed. To where are you going to evacuate them? You know, and the big concern is the displacement of Palestinians from Gaza could mean permanent displacement. Other news, Al-Amal Hospital has reportedly been entered by Israeli forces. That's been a huge concern. Um, It's been reported almost one in 10 children in Gaza under the age of five are acutely malnourished, according to data from the United Nations from arm measurements showing that they are physically wasting away. Norway has said that it is going to give $26 million this year in 2024 to UNRWA funding, which continues to be a significant need. Hamas has said, uh, the Gaza Health Ministry has said 27,946 people have been killed in Gaza, 67,500 wounded since the war began. Arab leaders are starting to consider solutions outside of Israel's control. Foreign ministers from the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Qatar, and Jordan, along with a senior PLO official, convened in um, Ridya uh, to discuss the situation in Gaza, according to the UAE. In Israel, Hostages and Missing Families Forum demanded a meeting with the War Cabinet, raising questions about the commitment of the Israeli government to free hostages. Um, And they have demanded to know if the commitment still stands or if they should be um, handing over the negotiating power to additional or other parties. In the West Bank, the occupied Palestinian territories, it's said that the Israeli Defense Forces arrested 12 Palestinians last night in raids across the West Bank. And in the EU, um, there's been an attempt for there to be further sanctions against Israeli settlers, but those have failed because of objections from Hungary and the Czech Republic. Um, Three Palestinian men in a West Bank hospital in January were killed by Israeli commandos who were disguised as medical workers um, and also disguised as Muslim women. And it has been said by a group of UN experts that that may constitute as war crimes. And finally, U.S. CENTCOM said forces conducted seven self-defense strikes against four Houthi unmanned surface vessels and seven mobile anti-ship cruise missiles ready to be launched against ships in the Red Sea uh, in the last day. So that's where things stand as we head into the weekend. Um, There is still much work to be done. So please uh, pay attention. Our bulletin came out today. Um, We'll be having meetings on Capitol Hill with the State Department, uh, hopefully with the White House also next week, calling for a ceasefire. Um, We're encouraged um, by some of the U.S.'s shift in rhetoric uh, in the last 24 hours. And, you know, may that be a shift in a positive direction, demanding a ceasefire um, and an end to the Israeli campaign in Gaza and a move towards a more negotiated settlement.